like to now read a message from Paul Kagame, the President of Rwanda, that he sent to commemorate our gathering tonight. Dear friends and distinguished guests, warm greetings from Rwanda. Although I am not able to be with you at this important event, I am particularly pleased to add my voice to yours as you celebrate some of the most noble values and beliefs. Last month, Rabbi Shmuley Boteach joined us in Rwanda for the 20th commemoration of the 1994 genocide against the Tutsis. This is an evening about Jewish values. Our organization and this evening are dedicated to the proposition that the spread of Jewish values will bring healing to a world that refuses to be healed, and justice to an earth that remains deeply unjust. This dinner celebrates not angels, but people, not divine figures, but mortal men and women. Miriam and Sheldon Adelson are the single biggest Jewish philanthropists since the Montefiores and since the Rothschilds, and I will celebrate them. Michael Steinart created the single largest Jewish educational program in modern history, and I will honor him. Sean Penn does more humanitarian work than any Hollywood celebrity alive, and I will defend him. Chris Christie is trying to fix the broken state that I live in. He's doing a great job. Rick Perry oversees the largest state in the continental United States, and I will never mess with him, because you don't mess with Texas. John Prendergast is one of the world's foremost voices against, against genocide, and I will trumpet him. Ron Dermer is the single most eloquent defender of the Middle East's only democracy, a beleaguered nation that is a light of beacon of, and freedom of human rights. And as my former student, I will take pride in him. It was the Jews who taught the world in its fiery exhortation to the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not murder. It was the Jews who taught the world in the very first chapter of Genesis that every human being Muslim, Jew, Christian, agnostic, atheist, black, white, every shade in between is created equally in the image of God. Donald Sterling doesn't need a class in racism and history. Donald Sterling needs a class in his Judaism. My friends, there are no books to be read in the crematoria of Auschwitz, and there are no Socratic dialogues that can be held in an ash heap. Life is the ultimate blessing. Defending life is just. Standing up for the oppressed is just. Fighting for the innocent is just. Stopping murderers is just. Honoring women is just. Protecting gay men from slaughter is just. Proclaiming religious liberty is just. Fighting for democracy and freedom is just. And this World of Values Network proudly stands with the Jewish state of Israel. America is no longer sending clear signals to the world, consistent signals. Signals like the ones Ronald Reagan sent when he was president, as to who our friends are, and that we will stand with them without doubt, and to who our enemies are, who we will oppose, regardless of the cost. And the rest of the world watches in desperation and hope that America will realize and act upon, once again, its indispensable place in the world, which is not just to be the strongest economic power, not just to be the strongest military power, but most importantly, to be the strongest moral power for what is good and what is right in the world. So the very first of the awards tonight is the Champions of Jewish Identity being presented to the Steinarts by Sheldon and Miriam Adelson. Dr. Miriam and Sheldon G. Adelson, in recognizing their role as principal supporters of this world, the Values Network, and its mission of making the Jewish people a light unto the nations, in appreciation for inaugurating the National Israel Debate Series on campus, in appreciation for their devotion to human life and their efforts to rescue individuals.
perilous environments. In gratitude for their contribution towards the ongoing mission of promoting universal Jewish values in world media, culture, and government. Ladies and gentlemen, please say thank you to two great citizens of the world, Miriam and Sheldon Adelson. Thank you. Yes, sir. God bless you. Through their support of birthright, they promote a proud Jewish identity. Through their commitment to Yad Yashim in Jerusalem, they sanctify the memory of the six million martyred and renew our resolve to prevent the evil genocide from ever visiting this earth again. Through their support of this world, the Values Network, which has brought us all together tonight, they help reassert the Jewish people as the light unto the nations. Israel is the oldest democracy in the Middle East, a strategic security partner, a tremendous ally. It is time for this country to end the policy of calculated ambivalence and renew our commitment to a strong Israel. America must be very clear. Israel has the right to exist as a Jewish state. Ron Dermer is one of the most important Jews, indeed I would say one of the most important people in the world today. He is the voice of Israel in the United States of America, and there can be no more articulate or powerful voice for the values of the state of Israel. No nation has been challenged like Israel. And despite all of these threats, we have maintained a vibrant and dynamic democracy throughout, with a real court, with real rule of law, with civil rights, with rights for women, with rights for everyone in Israeli society, with a free speech and freedom of religion. And that's something that no one should forget. And I think decades from now, when you have a little bit of distance from what we face today, people will marvel and be amazed at this little democracy called Israel that was able to uphold its values under the most unbelievable conditions. Okay. We must do everything we can. The values, you know, my parents never achieved any wealth, but they left me as rich as I could be with something called values. And it's those values that my family and I pursue not only in our philanthropy, but in our desire to ch help change life for the better for Israelis. And all of you probably think that this story is about what Sean Penn did for me in Bolivia. Well, who do you think was the first person I saw when I walked off that plane into U.S. soil for the first time in three years? It was none other than Sean Penn with a team of immigration officials to ensure that I could safely leave the end to the country Sean put me up in a five-star hotel until the media learned I was there, and then he brought me into his home, gave me a warm bed, stocked his refrigerator with kosher food, and told me, Jacob, my house is your house. I would like to thank Rabbi Shmuley Buteyach, Mr. and Mrs. Steinhardt, and especially Dr. and Mr. Adelson, the biggest Jewish philanthropist in the world who chose me to represent this year's Champion of Jewish Justice Award to my dear friend and the hero of my grandchildren, none other than Sean Penn. So why did I help Jacob Ostreicher? Because it's our job to do so. Lastly, I've been told by, that many in the press and the blogosphere on the left and right, as if there are only two sides to every issue, 
are suspicious of the strange bedfellows some of us may appear to be tonight. Tonight, as we speak and as we leave this hallowed hall, we have to know that millions of people right now are being targeted for elimination on the basis of their identity. Whether it is race in Darfur, or ethnicity in Syria or Burma, or religion in the Central African Republic,